Welcome to this video about KPI dashboards and scorecards for ServiceNow. In the next couple of minutes, we'll take a deep dive into the, the tool, the KPI dashboards and scorecards, as well as the concept of performance management. But first, let's start explaining the words KPI library and Mirror42. Mirror42 is the company that provides KPI scorecards and dashboards applications in the cloud. Once you have your key performance indicators defined and measured, uh, you can also access them through mobile and analyze their trends. The KPI library is a global community that was set up by Mirror42 in 2007. Over 400,000 users have defined over 6,000 key performance indicators since 2007, and Mirror42 organized those key performance indicators by process, industry, and business framework. The IT section is one of the largest sections within the KPI library. And if you are using ServiceNow to also deploy applications outside IT using its platform as a service capability, um, the KPI library can give you some meaningful hints and insights in what key performance indicators could be for those processes. Then let's first explain the concept of a key performance indicator. And I've taken the definition from Wikipedia. A performance indicator or key performance indicator is a type of performance measurement and KPIs are commonly used by an organization to evaluate its success or the success of a particular activity in which it is engaged. Success is defined in terms of making progress towards strategic goals. Now let's focus on that last sentence, making progress towards strategic goals. A key performance indicator needs to tell you where you've been, where you are, and where you want to be. So the trend throughout time is a very important aspect of a key performance indicator. The strategic goal could also be translated into a target. So it's also very important to be able to compare yourself with the target and know what, which road you still need to take in order to be compliant with your goals. Within performance management, people talk about leading and lagging indicators, and this is an important concept. And I'll explain this real briefly with an example. So the personal goal that some of us have during this when summer is approaching is to lose some weight. So we have a desired weight that we want to hit. The lagging indicator is we step on the scale and we look whether we managed to lose weight. And then we conclude that you know, that we didn't or we did. It's past performance looking. It's not going to tell us if we are going to lose weight. It tells us whether we have lost weight. Now, leading indicators tell you something about your what's going to happen in the future. They are leading indicators for performance. For weight loss, obviously, this is calories taken in as well as calories burned. If you take less calories in, then you burn them, so you burn more than you take in, you probably are going to lose weight. These are the leading indicators, and if you measure those on a daily basis, you will have a good prediction of what's going to happen in the future. The same thing within IT. Within IT, one of the most commonly used lagging indicators is incident solved within deadline or incident solved within SLA compliancy. It tells us something about how we have performed in the past, but it doesn't help us to improve our performance in the future. In order to improve our performance in the future, we need to focus on indicators that are directly related to the activities of our IT department. Percentage of incidents open for longer than 30 days percentage of incidents not updated in the last 30 days. Those indicators tell us something whether our staff is actually working on the incidents so that you know, we have a chance to close them inside the deadline. Leading indicators that you should be focusing on driving your improvement programs. You probably also need to report on SLA compliancy for management and external stakeholders. But if you want to drive the performance of your team, you also need to start looking at leading indicators. So the, once you understand the concept of key performance indicators, 
you can see some differences between performance management tools and report management tools. Now ServiceNow has got a solid reporting engine already built in, which is really powerful. But there are some differences with performance management that the reporting engine has trouble dealing with. For instance, we saw that key performance indicators have a target, and targets will vary over time. You can't easily set dynamic targets in reports. Key performance indicators need to be measured and snapshotted over exact comparable periods in order to do the solid trend analysis, while reports were designed to be run in real-time or ad hoc modus. KPIs are trends, everything needs to be time-stamped, and reports again are more focused on real-time status updates. The advanced trend analytics that we need to have in order to understand the trends, filter out weekends, filter out peak hours, Sometimes the reporting tools are, were not really designed for those kinds of advanced trend analytics. And you need to be able to define new formulas. Um, if you have a couple of key performance indicators, very often you can define a new one that gives you a different perspective based on the data of the other ones. So formula-based analytics, trends, really important for performance management targets. Things that are not always there, a functionality that is not always there in reporting engines because they were designed for a different purpose, namely to give you the ability to run ad hoc real time reports. So, this is what Mirror 42 for ServiceNow does. We kind of generate the metrics out of ServiceNow, we store it in our, our, in, our, in our database in the cloud. We do not make a copy of the ServiceNow database because we don't, we're not interested in all the details. We generate the metrics. So from a security point of view, you're not duplicating your ServiceNow database. Very important. Key performance indicators are then visualized with scorecards and dashboards that can be deployed inside ServiceNow and also accessible through mobile apps. Let's take a look at the solution. So. Here I am in ServiceNow, and as you'll see on the top left, there's a menu installed called Mirror42, scorecards, dashboards, and messages. I'm at the scorecard tab, and what you'll see here is all the metrics that have been defined. A couple of things that we can see. Percentage of incidents closed in time, the lagging indicator that we talked about. You can see here the trend. You can see the, the, the target line, the green line, and you can see that we're at 79.4%. Uh, we're below target because it's colored in orange, and we actually slipped at minus 7.4%. You can see the trend here slipping as well. Now, a couple of things that you can do uh, inside the scorecards. So scorecards are being generated for you, and it provides a couple of cool features. End users can star personal favorites using the start menu. Organizations can set the most important indicators for the company, which we call the key indicators for the entire company. So here they are. You can see in this example, you know, there are some key indicators that I've set as personal favorites. For instance, the mean time to resolve incidents. We can also search using the search button and we can zoom in on the best performing key performance indicators with the top five performance shortlist. And we have the same thing for worst, improved, and declined. Now, if I go back to my key indicators, um, I will start launching one of the indicators in more detail. So I'll go to the next page and look up the open incidents. There it is. So we have 261 open incidents, which is in red. We're above target, as you can see, which is not a good thing. And we've been, you know, growing the backlog with minus with 3.7%. So if I zoom in on that, and this is what end users can do, I can launch a detailed scorecard. Turn it into a bar chart, zoom in on the last month, draw in a trend line, but also apply an aggregate. I don't want to analyze this on a daily view, but on a seven days running average view. I can do even more. I can zoom in from that seven days running average view in the performance of my assignment groups or by incident state or by priority, so-called breakdowns. And as you can see, the trend is there as well, and I can continue 
you know, zooming in on the trend. So that's sort of scorecard functionality. If we then take a look at the dashboard functionality, dashboards are visualizations of key performance indicators. For instance, the incident management dashboard shows me all the key performance indicators for incident management. We have defined a set of predefined key uh, dashboards for various processes, such as incident management, request management, problem, change, release, etc. From anywhere in the dashboard, you can launch the same graph again. So if I click on Open Incidents, I can launch the Open Incidents scorecard. And there's a little bit more. If I click on Details for the Open Incident, there's the ability to launch so-called Smart Links. Now I see a backlog of Open Incidents and I would like to know how, which of those incidents were not updated in the last 30 days. And I can click on that and give me a direct overview of all the incidents that are currently in service now that have not been worked on for the last 30 days. And I can directly start working on it, which makes the dashboard very actionable. So another interesting dashboard is the following. Analyze your assignment groups. Simply select an assignment group from the list and the dashboard will give you all the metrics related to that assignment group. These are called breakdown dashboards or dynamic dashboards. What are the kind of visualizations that we have? Um, there are tons of visualizations in the tool. Uh, bar charts, last score, gauges, compare charts, area charts, pies, breakdowns, Pareto, stack bars, bars and totals, multiple lines, and it's very easy to set it up and to create it. Now, one of the interesting things is that you know, the dashboards in service now are role-based. So if I log in as a different user, you will see that based upon my user profile in service now, I will get to see different dashboards. The first thing that you'll notice is that I no longer have access to the scorecards because I can only see certain dashboards. Now, within dashboards, I only have three or four dashboards to my um, um, that I can view. And if I take the assignment group dashboard, I'm now only allowed to see the two assignment groups that I'm the manager for. Last but not least, all this information can be taken with you on the iPhone app. So every day the dashboards are updated and you have full understanding of what's going on. And you can even already check that information before you hit the office. This is the power of performance management for ServiceNow. We help you to drive continuous improvement in your ServiceNow environment, um, ensuring that IT is improving its performance month by month, year by year. Thank you very much.